beginning to show, we are beginning to demonstrate the, 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 the possibility of leadership, no matter how late you are coming up. It's been three years, but um, in those three years, we've run the way we said we would run, and uh, this has been quite um, you know, validating. This is what we have been doing since 2002, and this is what we will continue to do. Covenant University a Christian mission institution founded by the World Mission Agency, an arm of Living Faith Church worldwide, also known as Winners Chapel, has within three years grown from what could be compared to a mustard seed in 2002 into an oak tree by the year 2005. Even though all that was available just before takeoff in 2002 was a vision and the vision alone, its effects just three years after cannot be denied, as there has been a consistent eruption of landmarks and great feet through this visionary institution. Right from the outset, it has been made clear by the visioner and founding chancellor, Dr. David Oyedipo, that Covenant University was neither designed as a conventional university, nor was it modeled after a particular institution in or outside Nigeria. Rather, it's a departure from the traditional system. He has never for once minced words in expressing the trailblazing and pace-setting mission of Covenant University. So our, our, our primary aim is, look, let us through a different approach, raise a new order of graduates in this country who will provide the lead for all the others by the steps they take, by the sense of mission, the sense of purpose, until uh, the, the whole objective is realized. I saw Covenant University as a new generation Harvard. I wasn't looking at Covenant University in the light of the Nigerian universities, if the burden. I wasn't looking at that. And that's why I took time extensively to study the history, the operational history of universities like Harvard, like Yale, like Cambridge, I mean, like Stanford, like Princeton. I took my time out to find out their background, how they began. What their driving force was, how they operated, how they developed their programs. And I can say I'm more than satisfied now that we are actually on course. And what is unfolding is a clear reflection of the vision that I saw about Covenant University. Within three years of existence, there has been an all round phenomenal growth in the physical development of the university, which was achieved in a four phase construction process. The first phase of construction began in March 2002 with a groundbreaking ceremony. Basic facilities for a successful takeoff on its permanent site were provided during this phase. They include a massive three-story college building for administrative and academic activities, two blocks of student hostels able to accommodate about 1,500 students, a magnificent 2,500-seat capacity student cafeteria with five restaurants providing a variety of menus prepared in a hygienic environment. A block of 42-bedroom flats which provided accommodation for Pioneer staff. Also, four boreholes were dug and a giant overhead water tank was provided to ensure ceaseless flow of water supply. A network of tarred roads, sewage and drainage system was also constructed during this phase. Proper electrification of the university community was also put in place with 24-hour provision of electricity. All these facilities were successfully completed in a record time of seven months as the gates of this revolutionary institution were swung open on the 21st of October 2002 for its inaugural class of about 1,500 students. The second phase of physical development commenced in February 2003 and ended in October the same year. Additional facilities were constructed to complement the existing ones. They include two new hostels that could conveniently accommodate another 1,500 students, 
Two blocks of junior staff quarters, also known as Covenant Quarters. Each block had 40 modestly furnished two-bedroom flats. 11 duplexes, known as the Professor's Quarters. 12 chalets, known as the Service Quarters. Four blocks of senior staff quarters, it's comprising eight tastefully furnished three-bedroom flats. Covenant University Community Bank and a magnificent 5,000-seat capacity student chapel. By October 2003, all these facilities were already in use. All hands were on deck for the commencement of a third phase of construction work. This kicked off in February 2004. Architectural landmarks of different kinds coupled with excellent horticultural layouts were more intensified in this phase of development. A state-of-the-art library complex, known as the Centre for Learning Resources, was constructed. Two additional hostels were put in place, making the total number as a 2004 rise to six. A new building for the College of Science Technology was also erected in the third phase of physical development in the university. The fourth phase of physical development commenced in February 2005. And in this phase, we had four additional blocks of eight bedroom flats, each tastefully furnished for senior staff of the university. Another set of 11 duplexes in addition to existing ones for the professor's quarters. 12 new chalets, known as service quarters, were added to existing ones, making the total number rise to 24. Four additional giant hostels provided to accommodate the soaring statistics of student population. By a prudent management of resources during construction work, the university was able to save a staggering sum of money of over 3 billion naira through a direct labor system. All the trucks that we use, they are serviced and maintained in our truck parks. Of course, they belong to us. All the equipment, the bulldozers, the payloaders, all the drivers, all the people working, they are our staff. So we tell them when we want them to work, and we even offer them accommodation so we can monitor the project from the beginning to the end. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain, they build it. We ourselves, we get surprised at what God is doing here. It's a great privilege and honor to be involved in this kind of project. We have seen God do amazing things. We have seen these buildings practically spring up from the ground and go to the roof in less than no time. Up till date, we have not had any casualty at our site. No structure has you know, shown signs of uh, cracks or uh, you know, coming down. We have not had any such uh, incidents at our site. Physical development at Covenant University continues to grow at an amazing speed as facilities presently under construction include an ultra-modern lecture theatre, a new 1,500-seat capacity student cafeteria to avoid congestion of the existing one, and a state-of-the-art sports complex. Covenant University indeed remains a beacon of light as far as infrastructural feats are concerned. This stunning development is not only limited to infrastructural facilities as the university has in the last three years enjoyed consistent academic growth and expansion rooted in a carefully designed academic curriculum. Several academic laurels have been won by the university, one of which is the university's rating in March 2005 as overall best in a nationwide accreditation exercise conducted by the National Universities Commission, the APEX regulatory body in Nigeria. All the programs presented to the NUC by the university enjoyed accreditation, including architecture and computer engineering. The Vice-Chancellor restates the university's commitment to emerge as a world-class university and not just a national pace setter. With capacity building for our staff, we want to say that um, it's not sufficient to just have the staff come in, you know, ready and prepared in terms of the qualifications that they bring in. Further training in terms of staff development has been something that we have held very, very dear. 
um, being on the cutting edge of learning in terms of pioneering excellence as a university, which is something that we want to pride ourselves with, particularly in looking at you know, the core essentials of what makes you know, world-class universities. Uh, we want to say that that of you know, staff development, keeping you know, with uh, current practices, identifying best practices you know, across you know, these wall centers you know, are things that we don't want to think can only happen you know, in universities abroad, say the Stanfords and the Harvards and the Cambridge you know, of this world. But we are saying that right here on the shores of Africa, right here on the shores of Nigeria, we can have a world-class university across all of these parameters in a way that will make us the pride of the African continent because we are tired of our graduates you know, going out of this country and being poo-pooed and you know, their certificates you know, being subjected to all manner of um, you know, screening tests because it appears that the context of higher education is being called to a lot of questions as far as the Nigerian context is concerned. We're talking about academics being trained here who will be able to expand the frontiers of learning and push the boundaries of learning with regards to their contribution. Apart from the two major international conferences hosted by the university, members of faculty have attended well over 88 conferences in and outside the country during the 2004-2005 academic session alone, most of which are fully sponsored by the university. The university's commitment to research and community service is unwavering. Several staff motivational programs are also in place to ensure the smooth and speedy realization of the university's overall objectives. When we bring the staff in, we don't just leave them. That's why we have very, very efficient uh, welfare services. We believe an academic environment must be conducive. And what God has done for us here is to provide such an environment. And that happens to be part of the welfare scheme of the university, ensuring that uh, every academic staff you know, has a comfortable accommodation with you know, very good furnishing. This is what we have been doing since 2002, and this is what we will continue to do. You are talking of a campus that you have 24 hours electricity. You are talking of a campus you have 24 hour water supply. So you are not thinking of how you will bath when you get home. You are not thinking of how will I get lantern to read when you, when you get home. You are not thinking of an experiment in the laboratory that you have to start all over and all over again. And we have always stated to the academic staff that what we want to do is to make sure that we provide a welfare environment that allows the best in them to come out. Today, the College of Science and Technology stands as a symbol of scientific advancement, not only in the continent of Africa, but the world at large. Having successfully hosted the first ever international workshop on pattern discovery in biology in Africa between the 18th and 27th of April 2005, Covenant University is poised for a trailblazing mission in the world of science. The workshop, which drew 36 scholars from five nations, led to the birth of the Nigerian Society of Bioinformatics and Computational Biology. In its commitment to consistently outrun any form of technological limitations, laboratories and workshops in the college are constantly updated with modern research tools and facilities that aid research work and effective learning thereby creating a befitting environment for witty inventions. These laboratories include the Power Laboratory, the Electronics Workshop, the Microprocessor Laboratory, the Mechanical Workshop, Telecoms Laboratory, Standard Physics, Chemistry and Biology Laboratories, Microwave Laboratory, a 200-unit computer laboratory which qualifies it as one of the best in the world. A 60 computer unit cyber cafe for students and staff aimed at promoting effective teaching and research work. The cyber cafe and other computer units in the university are maintained by the Center for Systems Information Services. Like 
the Vice Chancellor had always uh, stated, we are not only earmarked for teaching, it is also expected that we should uh, take the lead in uh, research. Research that would lead to the emancipation of uh, black Africa, improve, uh, uplift the dignity of the black man. Uh, we can achieve some technological self-reliance. We don't have to accept that to be, to be right, that one, one has to be, to be white, according to the Chancellor. You know, he continues to remind us of that. And so the college is um, very, very important. And when you are talking of, uh, you know, um, development, national development, when you are talking of technological advancement, of course, the college, you know, is, uh, you know, is very, it's, it's an important factor. The college presently runs about 15 degree programs, including petrochemical engineering and architecture, which also enjoyed accreditation by the National Universities Commission in the recent nationwide accreditation exercise. Between the 27th and 30th of June 2005, the College of Human Development successfully hosted an international conference on human development with the theme, Challenges of Human Development in the 21st Century Africa. Over 225 abstracts were drawn from 14 nations with about 180 participants. The unique programs we run here, we have HMD, Human Development to Say itself, which is organized by our own group here. The aim of that program is to investigate into the nature of development itself, development itself so that when we talk about sustaining that, we'll be able to lay down the parameters well enough so that nobody makes mistakes about how to evaluate success. Many of our students have done pretty well in their different areas and um, we are marching steadily towards graduating our first set of students. Academic expansions and growth continue to take place in the college as it presently has four departments and runs about seven degree programs. The College of Human Development, the Chaplaincy and the Sports Department work together to ensure the development of a total man, spirit, soul and body through a special program of a university known as the Total Man Concept, TMC. While the College of Human Development is committed to the mental development of the total man, the chaplaincy plays a critical role in the spiritual enhancement of students. We know that the state of a man's life is determined by the state of his spirit and the overall impact of a man to his world is determined by the well-being and the soundness of his spirit. And that's the reason why we concentrate and focus on the spiritual development of the student body so as to ensure that when, when they leave this place they go out there as reformers and they go out there as men and women that are set to change the, their world and their generation. We, and we go about effecting such an impact on the student body by preaching the word of faith, preaching the word of God and also through counseling sessions on a one-to-one -one basis. We have seen dramatic changes in the lives of some of them who have even been drug addicts before but they have given up drug addiction and there are some of them also that have been into one form of vice or another but today the story has changed and they are on fire for the Lord set to leave this place as world changers and reformers. The sports department of the university handles the body segment of TMC by arranging a series of sporting activities to ensure the physical fitness of students. The College of Business and Social Sciences also anchors another unique program of the university known as Entrepreneurial Development Studies, aimed at inculcating sound and entrepreneurial values in all students of Covenant University. The CBS, which has the highest number of students population of all the three colleges of the university, offers 15 degree programs in five departments. So our programs, as I've said, they are also professionally oriented the accounting program. It has got to be accredited in terms of professional uh, expertise, in terms of staff, faculty. Our staffs are 
have not only academic qualification but also professional qualification. The university has also grown to have a school of postgraduate studies to ensure the development of quality faculty as well as fulfill its mission of training high quality graduates. We are just about to enter the third year of postgraduate studies at CU. The first year we had 42 students who were registered for Enfield PhD. Uh, there was some expansion in the second year. The second year we took in 61 students, 26 MSc students, 8 Enfield PhD and 27 PhD candidates. So at the end of the second uh, session, we had 106 postgraduate students. The University Library, also known as the Center for Learning Resources, is housed in a magnificent three-story architectural masterpiece right in the midst of the college buildings and the student halls of residence. With a sitting capacity of about 3,500 readers, the University Library can confidently boast of multiple volumes of current publications, up-to-date journals with virtual online access. When the UC came here, they were amazed when they saw how current our materials are. There are journals we call IEEE -E -E journals. They are journals in engineering, very expensive journals, you know, Surprisingly, many of them got in here and were, you know, that this, you mean this can be here? And we say, yes, they are here. And a number of them have arrived. In fact, they called me from London to say that they have shipped a large container of journals. So we are really making progress. Our management has been committed. Of course, you see management within the first three years setting up this kind of building, pumping so much money to, you know, getting, move the collection from, 5,000 to 18,000 at a go, and then getting, on, getting us all of the online resources we requested for, hooking the library on the internet, that shows you their commitment you know, towards um, a rich academic environment. Spirituality. Positive mentality, which is referred to as possibility mentality by the Chancellor. Capacity building, integrity, responsibility, diligence and sacrifice are the seven core values engaged by Covenant University to instill discipline and inculcate royal virtues in all her students. This is Hebron. The birthplace of kings and queens. No king reigns or rules without the due process of confirmation for enthronement. Uh, the Students Affairs Department over the years, God has helped us for the past three years now that um, we've had uh, the university in existence. God has helped us to nib in the board precisely. Every erring student and every behavior that is contrary to the core values of the university. So essentially, the Students Affairs uh, Department ensures that the disciplinary component of uh, the university is pursued to the letter. And this is why the due process of training for Rini is put in place. A professor came in from University of Minnesota last year. He said, as I looked at the students, Walking by the roadside, on the, on, on the walkways, I saw dignity, I saw royalty. That's what they're talking about. For instance, I was up in the campus, on the campus last night about 1 a.m. in the morning and discovered that, I mean, so there was a technical fault somewhere and light went off in one hall of residence and then in another and then in another, making three. There was no noise from any hall for young people. I was there with the vice chancellor, with the registrar, with the director of fiscal planning and development, and two top officials of that department. We were all in a bus, and just trying to see how everything was going in that area. And then the light went off. While we were there, there was no noise. Not a arrow. No. Disciplined people. And that's what I saw. I saw an army of well-disciplined people.
The efforts of the university leadership so far in the last three years have no doubt generated the desired changes in the lives of most students whose total population has risen to about 6,000. Our world really hasn't seen anything yet. We've been groomed from the beginning up until now. Many things have happened. You've heard of the All Gettings Readers Club, the IFIDOR Securities. We've heard about Delta Transport Company, the fashion designing company here in Covenant University by students. We've heard about their community outreaches. We've heard about their responsible works out there in the community. And you feel that what are these students up to? We've not started yet because we are about coming out. And as we come out, we're sure we're going to change our world. Because if we can begin to make contributions from where we sit down now, from Hebron, the birthplace of kings, you can be rest assured that there's hope for Nigeria. There's hope for Africa. There's hope for our world. Because in a short while, the arrows of God will be released to cause change in Africa. What we have seen so far is microscopic compared to what is to come as the Chancellor shares his visionary insight into a more glorious future of Covenant University. I am very persuaded that within the next 10 years, Covenant University graduates will be the main source of funding the university. I can see that. I can see that very clearly. I see a picture of an institution that will be the pride of Africa. I see us sharing with Harvard and sharing with Yale on many projects, academic projects. I see Covenant University rewriting the history of university education in Nigeria. I see the best of the brains out here. In the next 10 years, I see our graduates, a number of them, moving close to professorial seats. I see within the next 20 years, for instance, most of the top faculty members as graduates of Covenant University and generating companies and corporations and industries that to begin to promote the job creation philosophy that we've pumped into them. So I see Covenant University as, as helping to rebuild the damaged image of the African people. And to the winner's family worldwide, he had this to say. And I want to salute the, the, the fortitude, the the oneness of the winner's family worldwide. I mean, I want to salute the, the, the faith of the men and the women in the leadership of the Holy Spirit and in their leader. Every winner gets excitedly committed to whatever we have found to be the way God is leading. And in the Covenant University thing particularly, they have more than demonstrated it. Not one dime of any financial investment has come from anywhere else. Not one dime from America, not one penny from London, not from our foreign mission stations. It's from the saints of God, what we will call the ragtag group that God has come to decorate with his prosperity as they be, remain obedient and committed to his goals. So I salute them. It's an army of people that uh, I wish Nigerians are tuned and, 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 and helped to to imbibe the winner's philosophy in our approach, it will be over.